Hi, I'm James from Access Bay. Welcome to the latest edition of GPI Friday. So this afternoon, what we're going to look at is a comparison of Swift GPI initiative versus its competitor Ripple, who also operates in the cross-border space. So in the interest of full disclosure, here at Access Pay, we have no reason to favor either party. Our driving motivation is improving the corporate banking experience for our corporate customers. Um, equally, there's a number of parties out there, uh, disruptors, um, etc., who could stake a claim to be able to move money cross borders and be included in this comparison. But this isn't their video, it's mine. And if your name's not on the board, you're not getting compared. So let's take a look. As for the criteria, payment speed and liquidity, fees and FX, tracking remittance data, networking scale, security and trust. Again, some arbitrary comparison measures um, that we've drawn out based on our experience of what's important to the corporate customer when making cross-border border payments. So without further ado, we'll look at the first one, which is payment speed and liquidity. Now, back in the day when the Swift Rails first emerged over 50 years ago, then payment speed could be hours, days, or even weeks in some cases. Um, and then Ripple emerged with their sub-second interledger protocol process for moving payments across borders. So at sub-second, I think we can definitely give uh, Ripple a tick on that front. And then G GPI was, was built by Swift, and we know from uh, the, uh, the GPI payments that are being remitted today that they've got payment times tr tr uh, typically under 30 minutes now on GPI. So again, let's give, give uh, Swift a tick on the, the speed front. This is all really important to a corporate customer because frankly, it all comes down to liquidity. And what you don't want is the payer's account being debited on a different value date or a previous value date to the, to the beneficiary's account being credited. And some banks in the chain uh, somewhere in the middle sitting on that liquidity overnight. So really important criteria. And I think at under 30 minutes for both parties, then we can say that they've both got this payment, this payment speed nailed. Um, we, we're not, I'm not going to go into the, the, um, the benefits of sub-second versus 30 minutes because, as I say, in our experience, the corporate driving motivation here really is does it happen the same day. Okay, the next criteria we're going to look at is fees and FX applied to cross-border payments. So again, in the old world of cross-border payments, then basically what happened is you go to your bank and you say, Mr. Bank, I want to make, as a corporate customer, a payment cross-border. No problem, says the bank. It's going to cost you some money. Quite a lot. But your boo sucks. We're not going to tell you what that money is until the payment lands at the beneficiary. Um, you've not really got any other alternatives, so suck it up. Then Ripple emerges. Um, and Ripple basically operate a process where you get, uh, they, they submit the payment request to the whole of the network via a kind of auction process. And so you get um, all the FX and the fees built in pre-payment. Pretty key to knowing exactly how much it's going to cost you up front, but also key for the beneficiary to know exactly how much they're going to receive for reconciliation purposes, etc. With the emergence of GPI, then certainly the tracker, the observer, and the directory and all the rich data that's came, contained within it holds the potential for customers to be able to look at uh, FX rates applied by the banks um, and fees, lifting fees that are going to be included um, based on history uh, up front before making the payment. But it's not quite there yet because all that information has to come via the bank. So how much of it they're going to expose to the corporate customer is a bit of an unknown. So GPI has the potential, whilst Ripple has already got this ability to give you the fees and the FX rates up front. So it's a tick for, for Ripple and a question mark for GPI as to whether they're going to get there in the future. The next criteria we're going to look at in the comparison is remittance data. Remittance data and, and a rich set of remittance data is really key to a corporate customer. You add, you add data to the payment when you send it out, whether it's a reference um, or other information, and you want to know that that information is going to get to the beneficiary. Oftentimes, the, this information is really, really crucial for the beneficiary as well, so they can do things like reconciliation against invoices. Now, both Ripple and GPI pride themselves on the fact that you get uh, all that rich remittance data attached to the payment, processed all the way through to the beneficiary. So simply, it's a tick for both on this one. Next comparison criteria is the network and scale of the solution. It's really crucial this because as a corporate customer, what you want from your cross-border payment solution is a guarantee that you can reach anywhere in the world, um, any currency, and from a bank's perspective, and it's critical to, to include the fact that both Ripple and Swift GPI 
um, are very focused on the banks. So as a corporate customer, you connect to your bank and the bank then connects their infrastructure to either the SWIFT payment rails or the Ripple network. Um, and as a bank, you want to know that with your cross-border solution, you can process millions of transactions a second. So to the first one on net, um, uh, network, can you reach anywhere in the world? Well, yes, absolutely you can with SWIFT because the existing SWIFT rails have been going for a number of years and uh, basically used by pretty much every bank in the world. So you can definitely achieve uh, scale um, of uh, banks, of currencies using SWIFT GPI. Uh, not so yet with Ripple. Um, they need to demonstrate that they can get their solution into the hands of a lot more banks globally before they can claim to be competing uh, with a network the size that, that SWIFT has today. In terms of scale and the ability to process volume, then SWIFT GPI is already processing um, about $100 billion every day over SWIFT GPI. Um, and again, Ripple has got some way to go to match that um, and prove that they can, they can process that kind of volume um, and indeed process uh, the volume uh, of transactions per second that the SWIFT network can. So we'll give a tick to SWIFT on this one. And again, um, as the, technology, the pace of technology develops, um, then there's no reason why Ripple can't get there in the future. So we'll give them a question mark on this one. Last comparison criteria on the board is security and trust. Very important this one. So certainly last, but by no means least. Um, so we're talking about corporate payments moving cross border. So what we really want to ensure is that the payment isn't going to go walkie somewhere in the middle of the payment chain and you never see it again. It's a lot of money we're talking about. So loss would be bad catastrophic, you might say. Um, so in terms of the security aspect, then the fact that the SWIFT network has, uh, been, was, has been going for uh, 50 or 60 years clearly means that whilst it has some issues in terms of um, things that need to be addressed to improve it from a customer experience perspective, certainly the banks place their trust in the SWIFT network and the SWIFT rails. And this is really critical actually, because as a corporate customer, then if your bank trusts the rails, then you trust the rails. Um, you tend to, um, the, the banks have, have had a lot of bad press since the financial crisis, but by and large, they are still the institutions that corporate customers trust to move their money around the globe. So in terms of security and trust, then definitely uh, a tick for the SWIFT network. And again, I think that this still is an unproven from the perspective of Ripple. Um, and back to the point, they need to get the solution in far more, far more the hands of far more banks before they can stake a claim to have the same level of trust in their solution that the, uh, the SWIFT network does. So it's a maybe um, for the future for that one. So where we've ended up by my calculation is that we've got uh, four ticks for SWIFT and three ticks for Ripple. So it's a current 4-3 uh, lead for SWIFT. And, and, and I say it's a lead and it's not a victory because what seems to me to be certain is that this argument and this debate um, and this, this, this race for improvements in the cross-border space is going to continue. Um, the way that I see this is that Ripple was like a, uh, is like a big stick that has poked the swift incumbent bear. Well, the bear's awake, he's built GPI, and I can't wait to see what the challenger has got hiding behind his back as well as a big stick to continue this fight. Because one thing's for certain, if this continues um, and the competition continues, then it means only good things for the corporate customer in terms of improvements for cross-border payments. That was this episode of uh, GPI Friday. Uh, next week, Andy Howarth.